Hello friends, this video on biomolecules part 8 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. In the next few slides. So if you see here, these two cyclic glucose which we have formed, their configuration differ only because of this carbon. So in this carbon, in this carbon, C1 carbon, in one case my hydrogen is on the left side, other case hydrogen is on the right side. Correct? So C1 carbon is called anomeric carbon. Correct? And these two forms are called anomers. Please note, these two forms which we have got of glucose, they differ in the configuration of hydroxy group at only one carbon. That is C1 carbon. So they are called anomers. This is also a type of isomers called anomers. So now we have talked about the fisherman structure. But this had some issues. It had some issues and that's why we came up with the, the chemist come up with a new structure called Howard structure. What is the issue with this? The first and the foremost issue I think is the confusion. It's all confusing. See, you could think that there are carbons here. There are carbons here, right? But there is no carbon at these positions. Sorry, at this position there is a carbon. See, there is a confusion here. Even I am confused now. Right? So these positions, six positions which I have put here, the circles which I have made in this figure, there is no carbon. But it's all confusing. So the new structure was proposed called Howard structure. And this structure, if you see, for glucose, it is almost similar to pyran. Only for glucose, we'll see the for fructose it is a little different, right? So it is something like this: there's oxygen here, and there are carbon here, one, two, three, four, five, and six carbons here. So this is almost similar to the shape of carbohydrates or glucose when you see using a magnifying instrument. So in physics has given a lot of magnifying instruments and Actually, if you see using optics, this is how the glucose looks like. This is almost close to the real structure of glucose. Right? There's oxygen here. Numbering starts from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. I'll just put dots in the place where I have carbon. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Correct? So, See, if you see this pyran, this is a cyclic structure with one oxygen and one, two, three, four, five carbon. Here we have six carbon that is attached here and actually here. Correct. And here my carbon one is my anomeric carbon we just saw. And the carbon and hydrogens are implicit in this structures. If you see, the hydrogens are not even drawn. There is a hydrogen here, there is a hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here, hydrogen here. That is not even drawn. The carbons are also implicit. If you see these dots, they are carbons. They are not even drawn. The thicker side it denotes the side near to observer. So there is an observer here. Right? So this side denotes the side which is near to observer. It is just to understand the three dimensional view. Right? So you want to convert from fissure to Howard, so whatever is on the left hand side of the fissure diagram, this side, it will go up and the one on the right hand side, it will go down. We will talk about this in the next slide, we will talk about how to convert a structure from fissure bell structure to Howard structure, right. Please understand that this is also called Pyrano structure. The glucose structure, the glucose Howard structure is called pyrano structure. Why? Because this is. Let's see how to convert from fisherman to Howard structure. What you can do is you can put a nail here and then put all these on the left hand, right hand side in the group and try to pull it. 
you will get something like this correct so this is the dot which I am talking about yes and see the way now if you visualize this this whole thing comes down and that's what the uh, rule says whatever is on the right hand side of the fisherman formula comes in the bottom whatever is on the left hand side comes in the top right so if you see the way it works is from glucose you want to convert from this structure to hover structure first thing you do is you write this pyran create this pyran So in this, this is my carbon 1, carbon 2, carbon 3, carbon 4, carbon 5 and this is a carbon 6. Now carbon 1, this is OH here, H here. OH is on the right hand side, it will come down and H will come up. Similarly in carbon 2, if you see all this, this will come down, this will come up. Similarly here, 3 carbon, H is on the right hand side, it will come down. OH on the left hand side come up. So carbon 5, so carbon 4, OH on the right hand side come down, H on the left hand side come up. Similarly, here I have H only, put H here, and then I have CH2OH. So this is a CH2OH. This is the way to convert from Fisher structure to Howard structure. Correct? Let's talk about the stability. There are two different kinds of glucose and we know that uh, the alpha glucose is not that stable. In fact, beta to glucose is more stable. And this constitutes only 36% of the total glucose in the world almost. And this is 64% of the total glucose in the world. If we talk about existence. Why it is so? So if you see here, there's an OH group, two big OH group here attached, right? And there is a repulsion by this. Since there's a repulsion, that means it's unstable. But if you see here, it's all alternate. OH, 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 right? So there are no, there is no place where we have two OH group attached on the same side in the alternate carbon. So there's no repulsion. Plus, so if you see this O and you see this is H here, that's how it is. And if you see there is a hydrogen bonding here, right? So because of this hydrogen bond, this compound is all the more stable. So there are two factors which make beta do beta D glucose more stable. Why? One is there is no OH repulsion as we have seen in alpha glucose. And the second thing is there is a hydrogen bonding here, which makes this molecule all the more stable. Please note it is also called glucose pyranose. Why? Because this is similar to the pyrene structure. Right? Correct? So it's called glucopyranose also. Now let's talk about the reducing and non reducing capability of glucose. We, okay, let's talk about reducing and non reducing sugar. So in this case, Let's find out if glucose is reducing or not. So as I told it, if it has aldehyde group or ketone group or hemiacetal, right, it will be a reducing sugar. So if you see this in this, this carbon, if you talk about this carbon, so this carbon has one H, one OH, so I'm just putting this carbon, has one H, one OH, 1 OR right and this side if you see is again 1 R correct this is what hemiacetyl since it is hemiacetyl it is reducing let's talk about this and in this all the carbon are not reducing this carbon is reducing this is not because here you won't be able to form this uh, Hemicyl form. Let's try to form for this carbon C2. For C2, if you see, this is H here, 
there is OH here, correct? This side, if you see, there is R. This whole thing is R with some oxygen somewhere, but it's not OR, it's R. Here also there is some R. You see, this is not a hemiacetal form. Similarly, C3, C4, C5, these all will not be reducing. If you talk, talk about C6, what if you see there are two hydrogen, one OH and one R. The whole this whole thing is R, let's suppose, right? R. Here, this is also, if you see, is not heavy acetyl. So all these carbons are not non-reducing. They are non-reducing, they are not reducing. Only C1 carbon is reducing. Here also, if you see, let's talk about C1 carbon. C1 carbon, there is OH here. There is H here in the down. There is OR here. And this side, there is a R here. So if you see, this is exactly same as hemiacetyl model. There is R, OR, OH, and H. That means it is a reducing sugar. So both are reducing sugar. In both cases, my carbon one is a reducing carbon. Correct. Let's talk about the chair structure. So the Howard structure was also not very popular. It had some limitation. The limitation was that this angle, all this angle is 120 degree, right? But if you see, all these are sp3 hybridized. All the carbon are sp3 hybridized in the cyclo in, in this uh, glucose. So the angle should be 109 degree. In fact, 109.5 degree. So if it is 109.5 degree actually, and you are saying it is 120 degree, that means this is a strain. By default, it should be 109.5 degree, but if it is 120 degree, assuming this structure is correct, there will be some strain on this, right? There will be some strain, and that will make this compound unstable, right? The torsional strain will make this compound unstable. Also, if you see all these six, one, two, three, four, five carbon and one oxygen, they are in a single plane. If they are in a single plane, what will happen? There will be more repulsion. Correct? If they are in a single plane, there will be more repulsion. So in that case, again, it will make the compound more unstable. To solve this, the chair structure came and with this, the angle is almost 100, 10.9 degree. It's almost close to my expected angle, that is 109.5 degree. Correct. Also, if you see in this, everything is not in the same plane. So if you see C1 and C2 lies above and below plane. Sorry, in this it is say that C1 and C4 are above and below plane and 2, 3, 5, 6 are in the same plane. So with that, also the strain is less. So with that, that, that account for the stability of the glucose because we already know glucose is stable. And that's why we came up with the uh, cyclic structure of the glucose. But this Hauer structure was not even to explain the stability of glucose and thus the shear structure was better to explain the stability of glucose because the angle is 10.9 one, one degree which is uh, very much near to 109.5 degree that is expected angle that proves or that accounts for the stability of the glucose molecule. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online tests, get pre-study materials, find tutors and mentors and much more. Thanks once again.